Okay, hello everybody. So, um, the reason I'm doing this, which if you're there Thursday, you already know this, but for the people that can't be at the Bible studies on a certain day, I'm going to every week make a video so you can hear the lesson still because the lessons coming up are so important and I love them. So yeah, um, but that being said, if you can make it, please, please, please try. Like, try, please, because being in person is all the difference and it is just, oh, these lessons are amazing to me. Uh, there's something that I wish I would have heard. So, yes, I was in your shoes not too long ago. So, please, please, please come if you can. I completely understand if you have a game or something, why you couldn't be there, though. And I know stuff happens with your family. So, yeah. So, last Thursday, I talked about a guy named John Wesley. He lived from 1703 to 1791. He is the founder of the Methodist Church. Um, he, his story to becoming a Christian, he grew up in a Christian household went to church, went on mission trips, a Christian school and stuff like that. But it wasn't until after all of that when he truly became a Christian. And that's what I'm about to talk about. But when he did devote his life for Christ, he did three sermons a day for 50 years, over 50 years, three sermons every single day, and ended up traveling over 5,000 miles a year, which in the 1700s is remarkable. That's insane. So I'm just going to say seven points that we could learn from John Wesley to help us become better Christians in our daily walk with Christ. So point number one, don't just settle for knowing about God. Knowing God and knowing about God are two very different things. Um, like his life, he, you know, he went to church and went on mission trips. But other than that, you know, like it's just what he knew, John Wesley. Like he knew about God and he knew that he probably should be doing these things. But then when he found Christ and he became a Christian and started living his life for Christ, when he knew God, it completely changed his life. Knowing about God is just, you know, living and like every now and then you'll pray, you know. You might even pray every night, but like knowing God, you do everything for him. I mean, just thinking the song, Jesus paid it all. Literally, he did the ultimate sacrifice. We owe him everything. He did not have to do that. He died for us. And we owe him everything for that. So living our lives to exemplify him. So whether that means, you know, going out and telling people about him, which is in the Bible, go tell all nations. I will say that so many times because it is so crucial. Or just like being kind and just living out the Bible because that is what we are called to do. So yeah, I related this to, you know, saying you're on a team when you're really the team manager. Technically, you know, yeah, you're on the team, but... If we went to watch you play, you're not a player. You're not going to play. You're not a player on the team. So, like, you can say you're a Christian, but until you live and you play like a Christian, you're not a Christian. Until you really devote your life to Christ and live for him, you're not a Christian. And if you have any questions on that, I would love to talk to you about it. Because it is huge at the end of the day. Knowing God will get you to heaven and knowing about God will not. Um, and that's scary to think about because the other end of heaven is hell and that is scary even to me that I mean that scares me um psalms 53 it is a great verse that i'm just gonna read real quick or great chapter says the fool says in his heart there is no god they are corrupt and they do vile deeds there's no one who does good god looks down from heaven on the human race to see if there is one who is wise one who seeks god all have turned away all alike have become corrupt there's no one who does good, not even one. So, whew, deep. Um, but yeah, great chapter. I just read actually like one through three. So Psalms 53. Um, point number two. This, okay, I even said this in person. This point, I've been alive 19 years, gone to church, gone to camps, everything that you can think about. This might be my favorite point of any lesson that I've ever heard because it's so good. For like this age specifically. I wish I would have heard this. Position and status are for the insecure. Whoa. Okay, think about it. Status is for the insecure. We care so much what others think. Like, it is so ridiculous how much we care, you know. Like, oh my gosh. I'm going to straighten my hair. Because, like, it looks better. And, like, what if people blah, blah, blah. That's a tiny little example, but we fear just so much what others think to the point that we forget why we're doing what we're doing. Like, it's just everything that we do, we think, how are others going to perceive it? So, like, what if I go and talk to this person about Jesus? Like, what are my friends going to think? 
Are they going to think I'm weird for doing that? It shouldn't matter because you're doing it for Jesus. Like, it should not matter what others think. They should encourage you, if anything. The people you surround yourself with are everything. Um, we just care so much what other, others think, which makes us insecure. How will others perceive us? Makes us insecure. Status is for the insecure. He made a point and said, I must stand alone on my own convictions before I can stand apart as a leader. Your convictions are basically like your opinion, like what you believe. So like, I must stand alone on what I believe the Bible is before I can stand apart as a leader. How am I going to go tell other people about Jesus if I don't even like know what I'm like, if I can't even stand alone on the Bible? How am I supposed to go out if I just care too much what others think to do it? He used one word for this and it was coward. And that is just so true. If you're scared to go and live a Christian life, you're you're a coward. I mean, that's just how it is. And I'm sorry, that sounds so rude. But that's just, I mean, it's so true. We should care. I mean, it's hard. I care a lot about what other people think. But that's not going to stop me from living a Christian life. Because that's what I'm called here to do. That is my purpose here. So, yeah. I love that point. Position and status are for the insecure. I think that goes hand in hand with the next point. Oh, my dog is barking. I'm sorry. Point number three, care for the obviously overlooked. Um, if you're succeeding at number two, you can easily succeed at number three. Uh, status is just so irrelevant in the eyes of God. When it comes time for you to be face to face with God, he's not going to be like, all right, how many friends did you have? And then let you into heaven. That's not how it's going to go. But the people you consider like weird or annoying or like a loner or whatever are probably the people that need God the most. Probably people that don't, you know, hear God at all. So, my dogs are barking. Okay, I'll be sorry. I just went and got my dog. Um, so yeah, care for the obviously overlooked. I hope I finished that point, but I kind of cannot remember. Um, but yeah, care for the overlooked. Point number four, another one of my favorites. Literally, such a good point. The community is not always right, and sometimes you stand alone. This is hard to hear. I mean, peer pressure is so real. Um, so the people you surround yourself with literally are everything. And I thought of two things right off the bat with this. And the first thing is abortion, um, which is a, a lot bigger deal than a lot of other things. But in our society, abortion is, you know, like a lot of people are pro-choice. And in the Bible, I, again, stand on my convictions, which in the Bible, I believe I'm pro-life personally. And so... Our society is so pro-choice that me standing up and saying I'm pro-life is like kind of like shamed upon. Like that's not society. It's not what the community believes. So I stand alone on my own convictions. Another one is how you use your language. I mean, cussing in the Bible don't like it's not supposed to be used. Language is not supposed to be used like that. It's a commonly overlooked one. But the people you surround yourself with, you know, if you are living your life for Christ, you can stand alone on that and not, like, just not do it. As mad as I get, I can get so mad. I'm a redhead. I get more fired up than usual. I don't cuss. I don't do any of that at all. Just because, one, it's not needed at all. And two, it's in the Bible. So <laughs> that's that's why. But it's normal in today's society. So it's hard not to. And I know that peer pressure is so real. Who you surround yourself with is everything. It's very, very hard, but quote that he said was, it is always the right time to do the right thing. And whether that means standing alone, that means standing alone. It's hard. And I mean, I'm going to talk about this next week. Friendships, you know, are everything. And so leaving those, leaving a friendship or just like people that you, just whoever you surround yourself with, if they are not leading you to Christ, then they are leading you away from Christ. And that's not what you, that's not what anybody needs ever. I've gone through a lot of, I mean, I've had a lot of friends and one in particular, um, I, my friend and I both had to leave this friend group and it was the hardest thing. It was so hard. It was so hard, but I've been there and I would love to help anyone through. If you're struggling with friendships at all, I've had my fair share. So please um, reach out to me. But yeah, it's always the right time to do the right thing. And whether that means standing up and leaving a situation, at the end of the day, if it's going to better you, it's
it's for the best. So yeah. Point number five, if you want to see the power of God, pray, pray, and pray some more. I talk about prayer a lot because it is so overlooked. It's like, I don't know. Everyone's like, yeah, I'll pray, but I don't know. And a lot of people are like, yeah, I'll pray for you. But a lot of times they don't. Prayer is so important. It is literally your communication with God. Um, so, I mean, prayer should never be your last hope, you know, like your last resort or whatever. It should be the first thing you go to. I think about this and I think about Uganda. I've been to Africa. It was a surreal experience. It's, I mean, anytime you talk to someone when they get back from a mission trip, they're like, it was so eye-opening. But this like makes me want to cry thinking about it. We would go to the houses which are built out of mud and straw and they are grateful for that. They are so grateful to even have a place to live. Um, there is this one girl, she, she lit a little girl. They didn't have a shirt for her to wear. Her, her pants were all cut up and everything. And it was just so sad, but she had a bracelet and she saw me and she gave it to me. And I was like, no, what in the world? I should be giving you something. And she it was like, uh, they translated it and they were like, it's all she has, but she wants to show you that she's grateful for you being here. Ugh. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what in the world? This girl has nothing. She has nothing. She barely has a place to live. She has to walk three miles to get her own water. She has nothing and she's going to give me something that she has. What in the world? Like, oh my gosh. So pray because you're grateful. Because I'm grateful. I have a house to live in, clothes to wear. I have running water. Like, I am so grateful for that. Pray when you are going through something. I mean, God is the only person who can always be there for you. He listens to everything you have to say. He knows your future. He knows your plan, your purpose, and everything. Pray because something good happened. Pray in the in-between moments when there's nothing to even talk about. When you're literally just sitting in your bed and you're like, I'm so bored, what do I do? Pray. Talk to God. It'll only lead you to good things. Praise God whenever you can. The next point is another point that I just love. Um, roll until the wheels fall off. Or in other words, literally go until you can't anymore. Um, John Wesley lived for God. He knew God and he lived for God. He preached three sermons a day for over 50 years, which is crazy. I talked about this point in Europe. They asked some people to get up and share on the bus, which my church was like the only one that did, I'm going to be honest, and the school in the back. But I talked about this point particularly, roll until the wheels fall off, go until you can't anymore. And why is that so important? I mean, we are so scared of rejection and that's why we don't get out of our comfort zone and talk about God, I think, in my opinion. I mean, that's why I was. I was like, people are just gonna judge me if I post this. It literally doesn't matter. But we care about our image so much that we like won't do anything. We forget why we're doing it. I've been called a crazy Christian before because I would talk to my friends about Jesus or I would, I mean, that's really the reason why. I talked to one of my friends about Jesus and a whole family called me crazy Christians, but I'm here today because it is just so important to me. You can't let what others think of you or what others say about you impact the way you live your life because it's not about them. It's about Jesus. Um, but yeah, so important. Uh, I just like, this is, this Bible study was started, well, of course, I thought about it for a long time, but I would never, like, do the, like, okay, I'm gonna do it until, oh my gosh, until I heard this point, and I was like, I'm literally doing the bare minimum. I'm, like, living my life for Christ, but I'm not influencing a single person at all. I'm not doing anything to outreach to other people, and so since I had already had this idea, and I had points and everything, like, lessons, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to go and I'm going to influence people until literally I can't anymore. I'm going to live my life to help others. So yes, roll until the wheels fall off. And my final point, <clears throat> when you're done, don't turn the lights out. Or in other words, the vision of your life should outlast your life. And I talked about it in our lesson on Thursday that for me, obviously outreaching to others but like this bible study is a point like that like I've wanted it and I've had this plan for two years of what to do I think about it every single day what I could talk about how I could reach these people and at the end of the day I can't do this for the rest of my life I mean at one point I'm going to I'm gonna die 
So I want my vision for this to outlast my life. I want me to impact at least one person and for one person to have this be a testimony to their life or, you know, remember one of the lessons. Brent Crow is the one that spoke this and I remember every single word that he said about this lesson because it is so important. And I want to be that person for somebody that, you know, helps him in the relationship with Christ. That would do anything. That would outlast my life. Other people knowing Jesus because of something that I said outlasts my life forever. So that's what that point means. And however that applies to you, I pray that you guys, you know, just like think about that and see how it could apply to your lives. So yeah, I talked about that. I also threw in the story, so I'm going to do it for this too. C.S. Lewis, this does not apply to the lesson, but I talked about John Wesley, how he became a Christian. C.S. Lewis, he wrote The Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe, or Narnia, and he wrote some pretty remarkable other things. Amazing dude to learn about. Like, this guy is insane. But um, he was a hardcore atheist, like, big-time atheist. Um, hated God. Like, the idea of God and everything. Hated it. Um... He went to he went to war and met a Christian and he said he was the nicest guy he'd ever met and he didn't understand why. He was so happy and he's in war. Like why is he so content with life? So he goes up and he asks the guy, he's like, How are you always so happy? How are you always so just loving life? And the guy was like, Well, I'm a Christian. I live my life for Christ. He was like, he literally in the writing was like, I know God. Like that's that's why. And C.S. Lewis, it tore him up. It made him so mad. And he hated that. He hated that this guy was so happy with life because he was a Christian. And since C.S. Lewis didn't believe in it, he thought it was just crazy nonsense. And then after war, C.S. Lewis continued to think about it all the time. And little did he know that this guy just planted that seed in him. And C.S. Lewis continued to think about it. And he started reading the Bible. And after that, he became a Christian. He read the Bible and it was speaking to his life. And he prayed and he became a Christian. And he like completely changed his life, lived a full Christian life. He came to know God and was a very great man at the end of his life. So yeah, it's, I mean, every story is going to be so different, but I just think it's crazy how like one little per one person saying one little thing, literally like a sentence can change a whole nother person's life. So yeah, it's my takeaway from that. Um, yeah, so that's my lesson. Like I said, I'm gonna be talking about this book. Um, it's amazing. Finding and keeping lasting uh, friendships is what this is about. But yeah, I would love if you guys could come. I'll send something in the group chat. If you know of anybody else that has interest in coming, I have, I just need to write this down. Um, I need to get phone numbers because Someone told me one, I forgot, sorry. Distracted, but yeah, uh, please come. It's probably gonna be on a Tuesday or a Thursday, so I'm sorry, soccer girls. But can't be on Wednesday because I work with my youth. Friday, Friday night football, wouldn't ever want someone to miss that. And then Mondays are Mondays, and I've got school all day, literally all day. So I'm very sorry about that. But it'll be a Tuesday or Thursday. If you can't make it on a Tuesday or Thursday, this video will be up for you. I will send a group text every time it is up. So yeah, um, let me know if there's anything I can pray for you guys about. I'm gonna send the QR code link one more time. Put this YouTube channel link in it. And please fill out the prayer request link um, if you ever have a prayer request, whether that's you guys are literally in school. So I'm praying for you guys, just letting you know. So yeah, I love you all. Hope to see you soon.